Hello, I'm Patricia McNeely. Welcome to my channel. My channel is about ascension, twin flames, healing, soulmates, and love. How can I help you today? Today in this video, I want to pay a little bit of tribute to Gabby Petito. I feel these every time they come up on the news. People whose lives were forever altered, their family and friends' lives forever altered because of something that is coming to the surface that really needs to be addressed. So I do sessions with people to help them read energies. This is going beyond a psychic impression because for me, the way my gift works is to pick things up spatially, almost like a scene in a film where I see who the players are, I can read their feelings and emotions, and I can advise someone as best as possible. I knew when I first heard about this that it wasn't going to go well, but this is no Romeo and Juliet story. This is a murder and someone who feels suicidal because of what happened. I'm going to talk a little bit about why you should not think of this as karma. So there are people who will say, perhaps that was her karma. Perhaps that was his karma. Perhaps it was her karma to bring something to light. And I say, no, that is not how karma is. Karma no longer has to teach a lesson. Karma no longer has to repeat all of the damage. Karma no longer has to give everybody collateral damage. Things to deal with. Grief to suffer through. Karma as a word does mean experience, to experience two sides of something. We are done with that. It's time for next level healing. So while my heart definitely goes out to Gabby Petito's parents, family, all I can say is I have a child. Every time I think of something happening to that child. It's terrifying. And sometimes you don't know what you would do. We all know that we don't like losing people, but where does it end? It's gotta start ending now. Because karma is how we once lived. Domestic violence is how we once lived. It needs to be put in the past. Part of what I do is when people come to me, they will ask me about people of interest, people that they've met. And I do pick up an impression of that person. It's not always what someone wants to hear, but when I see situations like this, I feel good that I've told them because they can make an informed decision about staying in a relationship that's toxic. Unfortunately, some relationships are lethal. They're not just toxic. They go beyond toxic. What I feel happened is that there was yet another argument and it got way out of hand and that there were unten unintentional things that happened in a deep panic. I'm not condoning this. I am saying this because this happens to everyone. It's not just happening because she's white. This is getting a lot of attention, but what about everybody out there? What about the teenage girls of every color that get kidnapped or brutalized? 
They get impregnated and never really get to see their full potential. These are not easy topics to talk about. I need to talk about it because I know where it lives in people. And it can't be like a rage monster chained up in there. If you want to help, let's start getting to the root of the matter and let's start getting to the mind that goes along with some of this. Because karma doesn't have to keep repeating. Domestic violence isn't pretty. And there's a whole spectrum of domestic violence. There's the simple smack, discipline, you know, given for disciplinary purposes. There's the mind that thinks up weird ways of tormenting children. There is the couple that is locked in battle, like they've locked horns and they just cannot get away from each other. If nothing else, in this energy, it's for change. It is to finally get to the steps of changing it. As the military shifts were changing, as the police department shift, we need to change it. And I want to say something about uh, systemic racism. So hear me out, please. Don't click off right now. What I want to say is this. The systemic racism needs to happen and on the other side. In other words, what needs to happen is the ending of the system, systemic things on the other side. In other words, when people come in for trouble, they can't just be judged based on how they appear or what the situation is. These situations are repetitive everywhere in every country. And people could look at it and say, well, here we've got another one, okay? And they get rather blasé about it. This is serious, okay? It's afterwards. It's when people have no place to go. It's when people have broken bodies that they don't stand a chance of fully healing. It's when people are dispirited and have broken spirits and they don't have any chance of healing it. I've done my fair amount of talking to people when they're living in their cars and they're living someplace else and they're crashing somewhere and they just need to know what's happening and they need healing. But they actually need a lot more than that. As I went downtown last week, there are organizations that pop up all over. I want to share some of them with you here. Um, one in my city is the YWCA. They have resources if people have been brutalized. And that includes sexual attacks. There is a safe place, programs and services. There is Sarah's Inn, which helps with placement um, into shelters and housing. The issue is none of these things are permanent. None of it is permanent. After someone starts to get a little better, they need to be shifted off. And that's where the real problem begins. That's when it can seem like the whole world is against that person. It's the number one reason people stay. I need a roof over my head. I need to be with someone. I need a man. Okay, and I don't mean to be totally man bashing here. But a lot of times people wind up single with children. And those children can appear like the father who, who you know, provided half of the biological material. What happens when the one parent builds up so much resentment, they start brutalizing that child and they start growing up thinking, this is how all women are, or this is how all men are, or she takes in a stepfather who then further brutalizes the children and torments them. This is an issue all over the place. And we are the people to begin to do something about it. I've had people say, he left me bloody. I don't know. And they can't tell. They are so thick in the situation. They cannot see the forest for the trees because that has become their normal. And that is not normal. It's not a new normal. That is not the new normal. If anything, the new normal is to start to find out about these things. So my heart goes out to everyone who knew her, everyone who was involved in this, because from what it sounds like, everyone got pulled into the drama. If you are living in a situation 
where there is drama and you're afraid it's going to escalate, I highly urge you to get my book, Twin Flame Relationships, when I have a chapter in here that is called Stop the Drama, How to Stop the Drama. If you are in such a bad situation that it is unsustainable, take heed and start looking for the help. If you're not sure where to look, start with a local charity and just ask questions, okay? I wish I could tell you I have all the names of everything, but I don't. I'm going to read you this, okay? We have a lot of nicknames for, you know, love, lovers, preciosa, baby, darling, honey, my boo, pretty girl, wapo, handsome, hubby, wifey, okay? Whatever you call it, love shouldn't hurt. Some things to look out for in unhealthy relationships. Is your other jealous or possessive? Do they get angry when you talk or hang out with friends? Do they try to sabotage your relationships with friends? Do they even try to seduce one of your friends and then blame the other person and say, well, it was their fault? These are tactics used by someone who's pretty devious, and yet they operate because that is their modus operandi. That's the way they're used to operating. And there's more. They tell you what to wear. They tell you you can't talk to people. They tell you you can't go somewhere. They get in fights a lot. They go through a cycle of they fight and they argue or they smack you. And then they're sorry, and they're sorry, and they're sorry, and it's a bunch of bullshit. They swear at you, they use degrading language, they degrade you, they cut you down, they denigrate you, they call you all kinds of names, okay? And maybe they say they're sorry, and they're not, because it'll happen again. They blame you for all of their problems, they blame the world, you know, it's the man, it's the job it's the boss it's you know it's everything except themselves they make you feel like you're walking on eggshells the minute you walk into the house that's a bad sign if you feel like you have to tiptoe around or you can't wait till they go to sleep or you can't wait till they go get out do you worry that anything you do will set them off there is a valid reason people are afraid of other people's emotions, and it is because of violence. It's because of domestic violence and sabotage. They call or text to check up on you all the time. So this happens everywhere. It's not limited to one country, but I would say this. Some countries are lightening up about it. I want to just take a moment now. And just say some prayers for Gabby, for her spirit, that she have a wonderful next life, that she receive the healing that she needs where she's at. And for her family to alleviate their grief and to know that people care. And I will say, don't forget your little girl. <laughs> You're always a part of each other. We do go on. Our spirits carry us on and on. And please remember that there is so much deep love and we never stop missing. But the love is there to lift our hearts and to help us live and love again. So thank you so much. I hope that you'll consider what I'm saying. I hope that you will not hang on to things that are just a dead relationship or worse, a bad relationship. 
get what you need and get to real living because love is here for you. Thank you.